we can get so much caught up in the day to day where we're consistently playing out these patterns that are not serving us. And then we get stuck in that because we start to feel very overwhelmed and defeated. But what routines can do is really help to re really help to create a new pattern, a healthy pattern that is going to be beneficial to you. And that's actually going to serve you, your family, your home. Hey there, you're listening to the Girls Talking Life podcast, and I'm your host, Johanna. If you're like me, you love time with friends. I always leave feeling encouraged, inspired to try something different, or I've learned something new. So why not continue to grow even when we can't be with our girlfriends? We're not made to do life on our own. So on each episode of this show, I'll bring you a girl and her story to give you refreshing ideas to stir your soul. Let's walk this road together. Are you ready to talk life? Hey there, you are listening to episode number 98. And girl, it is September. As we move into this new season, we have the opportunity to reset our schedules, get organized, and have time for what really matters. My guest today, Ashley Brown, self-proclaimed routine queen, is here to help us with this. Ashley shares her story of transitioning from a working mom to a stay-at-home mom and how the shifting of her role led her into depression and the mismanagement of her life. She prayed for God's help, and he answered her prayer with the idea of routines. This allowed her to get her life back on track and eventually led to her business, Routine and Things. You'll hear Ashley and I talk about why we all need routines, where to start with your fall routine, and how routines can help us establish spiritual disciplines. Stick around to the very end of the show to hear how you can be entered into a giveaway for one of Ashley's amazing products. Everything we talk about can be found on girlstalkinglife.com. Here's our conversation. Hey there, Ashley. Thank you so much for coming on the show. Oh, thank you for having me. I'm excited. I would love to know just a little bit about you. Where are you in the world and what is your family situation like? What does a day look like for you? Oh, wow. Where am I? I am. (laughs) I'm in Baltimore. So I live in Baltimore, Maryland, even though I'm from the South. I'm a Southern girl. I'm from South Carolina, originally born and raised. So definitely those Southern roots are definitely intertwined into my life. But I live in Baltimore, Maryland, which is a really beautiful city. If you've ever been, you probably know that. But if you haven't, don't let the world try to tell you that Baltimore is not a beautiful place. It's definitely a beautiful place, beautiful people. Um, And I live here with my husband and my two girls. They are three and five. So still have the little ones, um, which y'all know probably how that is. If you have little ones, Um, it can definitely be fun, but also a challenge at times, right? That's just what having kids in general. But yeah, so our days or just my day really looks like being with my family, connecting to myself, connecting with God, and just hoping for the best, always just trying to put my best foot forward, helping others. That's why routine and things exist. And I'm super excited about being able to help women in my business and doing, you know, doing the best that I can while I'm here. I'm always trying to make the most of this thing called life. You mentioned that you are the owner of Routines and Things. And I'm just curious to know a little bit more about your business and then why are you so passionate about helping women get organized? Yeah, so routine and things. This was a business. Honestly, I feel like it was very much God led. I was a stay at home mom for like like two and a half years. And during that transition, this was back in like 20, 2017, 2018. And during that transition of me being a working mom and going to being a stay-at-home mom, which I never thought in my life I would be able to even have that opportunity. I didn't grow up knowing anybody that was a stay-at-home mom. I was raised by a single parent. My family, they had to work. So it was just like, I don't know what this thing is. So when I got the opportunity to do it, I was like, yeah, of course. Like, I would love to be at home with my baby girl. So I only had one daughter at the time. And so that transition, though, was really rough. Like a lot of identity shifting, um, which I didn't know was even going to come up for me, but a lot of identity shifts and just really thinking about like, did I make the right choice? And I think just that shifting of identity really led me to mismanaging to the mismanagement of my life. Like I couldn't keep up with things because I think I was very much in my head, very much emotionally dealing with something that I didn't even know I was dealing with. 
And so it just led to me like not being able to keep up with things around the home. My daughter sitting around her PJs all day watching TV when I really wanted to be in activities with her. I got to a point of being super depressed during that time. And I remember just one day like praying to God. I'm a, I have a huge faith, very much connected to God and just being like, God, please help me because I have been depressed before. But I was like, I'm not sitting in this. I can't do this. And I was pregnant at the time. And I was like, God, please help me here. And I really feel like God said to me, you need routine. You need to create better routines. You just need to get into flow. And so I'm like, okay, God, okay, I'm going to do it. I'm going to, I'm going to start creating these routines. I had never been very intentional about my routines because I'm pretty much an organized person. They have always just come naturally, but at that point they weren't coming as naturally. And so I really decided like, okay, how are you going to do this, Ashley? And just one foot in front of the other, I just started to build routines. Didn't know what I was doing. Just was like, okay, and nothing but some steps you need to do. <laughs> so I started building my routines one by one, got to a point of feeling really good in life, got, you know, came out of the depression, was managing life really well, being able to be really connected to my daughter and the daughter that I was going to bring into the world soon. And after that, I was like, you know what? I'm going to start this business because during that time, I have really thought I was in search of doing something and I didn't. And I was like, I always felt like I'm going to have a business. Like I want a business. I'm going to have a business one day. I never thought it would be this type of business, never in my life. And so when I decided that this was going to be it, even though it wasn't, I started it as a community in the beginning and just really just helping women and just teaching women about routines and the power of them. I really felt as if like, this has to happen. Like I need to help women. And I really feel like it was God led. And that's how I got into it. It's just starting the community at first, starting the podcast and get into selling products. And now I have the accelerator that is starting really soon. And so being able to help women with routines is so important to me because I don't think sometimes we realize how important it is to be in healthy patterns in our life, like to have these healthy patterns that we're doing. We can get so much caught up in the day-to-day where we're consistently playing out these patterns that are not serving us. And then we get stuck in that because we start to feel very overwhelmed and defeated. But what routines can do is really help to re it really helped to create a new pattern, a healthy pattern that is going to be beneficial to you. And that's actually going to serve you, your family, and your home. So that's how I came to the business. I just love it so much. <laughs> well, I love that story. I love that you recognized, hey, I am not in a good place right now. This is what's going on with me and I need a change. And then you reached out to God to direct you in that. Exactly. Always, always in my life. I'm always like, God is, God is number one. Who else is going to direct me? Not no humans, child. I mean, we do our best, but (laughs) always falling short. (laughs) Right, right. (laughs) But yes. Well, let's dig into what exactly is a routine and how is that different from saying planning your day or a habit that you might have? Yes. So a routine is just a series of actions that you do regularly. That's all it is. And that's very different than a habit because a habit is like automatic. You don't really have to think about it. It's something that has become so ingrained in you that you just automatically do it. It's really no thought to it. Um, It's like you're on autopilot. You know, like sometimes even like as you're, if you think about Like if you're driving and you're like, you're not really focused on driving because you've done that route so much that you're not even having to think you're, you're probably listening to a podcast and you're just making a turn and you're not even really thinking about it. And so that's more so of what a habit is, but a routine, you still have to be intentional about thinking about your routine and making sure that it's flowing in a, in a good way. Now, the difference between routines and planning is that planning is only a plan you're not really taking action unless you take action on your plan. Whereas routines, you're taking action. You're in action as you're doing the routine. So routines are very action oriented. Planning is not so much action oriented unless you're taking action on that plan. And I think that's why um, sometimes many of us struggle with carrying out the plans that we have is because they're not, they're not action oriented. Like it's just a, It's a roadmap. It's a guide for you, but it's only a plan. That's it. And sometimes we can stay stuck there. That's why I'm a huge proponent for 
if you are going to plan, you need to have a planning routine as well as you need to have routines in your life when you are wanting to get and stay organized along with the planning. Don't just think that planning is going to help you stay organized. It's not like you need some routine so that you can be in a rhythm, that you can be in a flow and that you always have a place to land when life gets crazy. I love that. So planning might be step one of getting your routine going, but the routine is actually the action. (laughs) Exactly. I write a lot of stuff down about what I want to get done, but not necessarily doing it. Yes. Yes. Correct. All right. So for a lot of us, summer is a time of less structure. Mm -hmm. And then as we move into fall here, we are going to be adding some of that structure back in. And I think that's a great place to talk about routines. For me, my routine is going to completely change. Like I can't pull from what I was doing last school year. My, I also have two girls and they are going to be, one is going to be in a different school with a different start time. The other girl is she gets a late arrival. So she's going to be going to school later. And so we need some new routines. How do we create healthy fall routines or back to school routines? Where do we start? Yes. First of all, I'm in the same boat as you, which I'm really like, I can't wait till they're in the same school because it's (laughs) the same thing. One is going to one school. Another one is going to the other school, different start times, different end times. I'm like, oh my gosh. So I'm in the same boat. So I feel you with that. But when it comes to creating healthy routines, back to school, fall routines, You really want to think about what's needed. Like when you talk about like your family, um, your daughter's having different school start times. I think just in general, two parts of your day that you want to focus on, and this is for all of us, is the morning time and the bedtime. Those are two routines I'll always share. Like if you're wanting to start a routine and get into a routine, those two parts of your day that never really change, you're always going to be getting up, getting ready in the morning. You're always going to be going to bed at night. When you have structure around those parts of your day, it can do your life, like your life just feels so much better in a sense, because you know how you wake up, how y'all get ready in the morning. So I would say focus on your morning and bedtime routines. Like if you know that, and you have to really think about like what is going to be really realistic for us as a family. That's really important to think about. And as well as the timing, like how long do we have in like our morning, especially the morning to like get up, get everybody ready. How does that actually look? Because if one of your children are going to school later, then they may not have to wake up. They may be waking up with you, but maybe not. Maybe the other parent is getting them up at a different time. So it's a lot about communicating with your family. If you have a spouse, it's really important to communicate with them and also communicate with your children that we're starting a routine. This is why we're starting the routine. This is how I'm thinking it could look. Do you have any, do y'all have any suggestions, any feedback? The one thing that I hate that sometimes we'll do, especially I feel like us as women many times is we'll try to take control and try to build out the entire routine for the entire family. And then we'll look around and wonder why no one is really doing it is because we didn't get, (laughs) we didn't get any input. And really, if you want to get buy-in for the routine, you need input and you need for your family to be able to communicate what they might want, what that might be beneficial for them. And so when it comes to a back to school routine and just a fall routine in general, I would say focus on your morning and your bedtime and really sitting down and having a conversation with your family about this and why it's important. And I feel like that is, those are, that's just something I want to, I want to say, because I think sometimes we can think about back to school routines and you might be thinking in another way, but it's like, really, when we think about our day, those two points are the most important to be perfectly honest, because the kids are at school during the day and you're probably maybe at work. And even if you're at home, you're doing your kind of your things during the day. So really what's important is how do we get out, get up in a way that is not chaotic? And how do we get out the door in a way that's not super chaotic with kids? Sometimes it's going to be that way. But then also, how are we going to bed? You know, are we going to bed at a relatively decent time? Are the kids feeling like they're winding down? Are we winding down at night in a way that feels good so that we get enough rest and sleep? And so all of that really ties into the energy levels that we have, really ties into um, just how we feel day to day. And so if you can focus on those two areas, I'm telling you, it will make back to school season 
in fall season, really great, especially going into the holidays. Yeah, you are such a smart lady, Ashley. I feel like that bedtime routine then also feeds into the morning routine, being successful or not, for sure. Oh my gosh, for sure. That's why I always tell people, if you want to, if it's between starting a bedtime or a morning routine, always start the bedtime routine first, because that is going to determine how well you're able to even keep up a morning routine. Because if you're going to bed super late, waking up, feeling super tired, you're going to keep pushing away that morning routine because you're super tired. So yeah. Absolutely. And I love what you said about getting input from your family. I think I'm probably guilty of not doing that. So that is great advice. Thank you. Yes, yes. No, it's so important because I'm I'm the same way. Sometimes I'll be like, okay, we're going to just do this. And I've realized it don't work. It does not. <laughs> Especially with my spouse. It's like, no, get his input. He may have something to say. If he doesn't, then fine. But if he does, that's going to be just better for us overall. Yeah, definitely. And my girls are 11 and 15. So they have things to say. <laughs> yes. Yes. Okay. Well, we've gotten the kids off to school and maybe there's a discipline or a routine that we would like to implement for ourselves. I know that spiritual disciplines have been pretty important to me. And I wanted to ask you if you have any way that you've started or grown a spiritual discipline in your own life based on a routine. Yes. So I meditate. I started meditating back during the, my stay at home mom time. And it has done so much for me. My, I first started with my morning, like meditating in the morning. Now it's been moved to my bedtime routine. And so I intertwine that spiritual practice into my bedtime routine. And that's how I've done it. And that can be really helpful. Like put like kind of piggybacking it off of something else that you do or putting it into a certain routine. Maybe um, like if you want to read your Bible every day, then putting that maybe in your morning routine, maybe putting in your bedtime routine, piggybacking it off of something that you usually do. Like if you know that you constantly wake up in the morning, maybe you get you a cup of coffee and sit down, then maybe it can be like, okay, after I get my cup of coffee and sit down, I'm gonna make sure I have my Bible there and make sure, you know, and then read at that point in time. So it does, or even open up, I love the Bible app. I think it's the Holy Bible, but I like that app as well. Maybe you can turn it on and they, you know, and read something for there from there or a Bible plan or something. So I would say piggyback it off of something that you do and it can help you stay consistent with it and just be intentional about it. Sometimes, you know, because I know we have such great intentions. It's like, I want to read my Bible or I want to meditate or I just want to pray to God right now, have my prayer time. And then life just happens and we don't choose that. And I'm always like, you have the power of choice. God has given us free will. You have the power of choice in your life. So Instead of choosing whatever else is distracting you, choose to read your Bible, choose to pray, choose that. You have the choice and don't allow a life to really steer you off course with something that is very valuable to you. That's how you build that discipline. Don't, you know, I always say it's really important to not let your feelings drive your behavior, drive your actions. Just because sometimes we don't feel like doing something, The way that we get disciplined is by choosing the thing that we may not feel like doing, especially when we know it's going to serve us. Absolutely. I feel that way about exercise. (laughs) Yep. I feel that way about meeting with friends sometimes. Yep. I don't want to go, but going feels great once I get there. Exactly. I'm telling you. Yeah. It's so important that we really, that we not allow sometimes just how we feel to really drive us to take action in certain ways. Because if we consistently do that, then we're going to get into a pattern that is unhealthy. That's not really filling us up. We have to really think about what is the long-term gain from this rather than like that short-term moment that you want to sit on the couch and watch Netflix, but what's long-term going to make you feel good. Yeah. Definitely. Do you have any other examples of routines from your life that you'd like to share with us? Yeah, I have my bedtime routine is beautiful. I love my bedtime routine. It's so simple. I just usually take a shower and I do my skincare and then I will pray and then meditate. That's my bedtime routine. And then I also have a tidy routine that keeps my head clear. Like especially like it's like at night 
because that's the I only tidy once a day usually, and it's at night. So even if my children are at home and things are looking crazy because they're playing with toys, I usually still will not tidy unless I know maybe somebody's coming over. Then I may, but if not, no, I wait to the end of until the evening. Then I start to tidy. And it's very simple. I just pick up things off the floor, just kind of fold up our blankets on the couch, wipe down any surfaces that need to be cleaned. If I need to sweep, I will. And that's really it. But it keeps me from feeling cluttered up here because the home doesn't feel as cluttered. And even when I wake up in the morning, because I usually exercise in the morning, I can exercise without feeling like I'm going to step on toys. I have to feel like I have to clean up before I exercise. So that's really important too. So that's one of them. And then um, also my morning routine is very simple too. As y'all see, I keep saying simple. <laughs> that's so important. <laughs> it's very simple. I just usually, after I wake up, I'll usually just, you know, like do do just the basics, like brush teeth, wash face, of course, but I don't really add that into it. But I usually get ready, put on my workout clothes, and then I'll work out. Usually drink water before that and then work out. But that's really, that's really it. Prayer first, though. (laughs) Always wake up saying gratitude and just thankfulness to God for just having me here. But yeah, just very simple. And the things and that's the thing about routines is sometimes we can overcomplicate it and think we need to add all of these things in. It's so important to think about what is the outcome that you're looking to get from your routine and then what actions are going to take you towards that outcome. And it doesn't have to be many. It can be one or two. It can be two or three. I usually say no more than five steps in your routine because you don't want it to be super complicated. But that's it. And those are those are some of my routines. I feel like I have like at least six or seven staple routines and that's it okay you that's know, they're I mean. not all daily they're, some of them are weekly so yeah is it, is it possible to have too many that depends on you but I would not I always say don't routine your life away you need to have space for freedom for flexibility we need to have space to just free flow that's so important in life as well yeah so good yeah, yeah. Ashley you have some tools available some things that you've created to help women because it is not easy always to keep track of all this and to get organized. Yeah. What have you made available? Yes. Yeah, so I have a free routine assessment that is really awesome. That free routine assessment is taking you through five routine categories, cooking, cleaning, planning, self-care, and children. And you get to assess like those five routine categories to see which one do you need most right now to create a routine in. So if you take the assessment, you see, oh, I need a better children routine, then you can get specific about like, what is that? Do you want to create a morning routine for your kids, a bedtime routine? But it helps you to narrow down your focus so that you know where you're focusing your attention when it comes to your routine. Because sometimes we can feel as if we know which routine we need. But honestly, when we actually assess um, and we evaluate what's going on in our lives, we see we need a different routine more right now in the season that we're in. So that routine assessment is really awesome for that. And you have written a book. Oh, yes. I have so many things. Oh, my gosh. I've written a book, Routine Building Handbook. Awesome. I mean, I love it so much because... Instead of it being like, like, you know, sometimes you can get books and like, definitely you have to read all of it. Like, I like that this is more of a resource. Like you can go to it and it's chunked out in sections. Like, are you really focusing on trying to assess your routines? Are you focused on creating the routine? Do you need help with maintaining your routines? It's chunked out in those sections. It even has a mom section in the back, which is awesome because, you know, and when you have kids, you know, routines sometimes can be very much different just in terms of how you manage them. But I love the book because it's a resource that you can keep for life. It could even be great for kids that are older going off to college or something. You can highlight certain areas in the book that could be helpful for them. And so it's definitely that type of book. Like if Q&A is really heavy in the book. So when you're asking yourself certain questions like, wait, how do I maintain this? Or how can I have a routine with my little baby? It's in the book. (laughs) Like those are questions that I answer in the book um, because I think it's really important that when you're trying to make progress that you have support and that can be a type of support that you have. And even the podcast too, Routine and Things podcast is awesome too. Many women love it. I love that. I mean, seasons change and your routines will change with those seasons. So I love that you can keep going back to the book and and kind of working on your current season. Exactly. Always. Yeah. 
And I believe you also have a newer product, a planner. Yes. Uh, Tell me about that. Yes. So the planner, the routine and things planner. Oh my gosh. I'm so excited about this because what is so awesome about the planner is that it incorporates routine building into it. So of course, like you're going to be planning for your week, but it incorporates routine building. So every quarter you're building a routine and you're really working on incorporating that routine into your life, which is really important. But also it includes in the planner, my planning method called routine blocking, which is all about helping you organize your weeks with more ease and really helping you focus on the things that really matter. So it's a visual, it's like a grid that has four different categories. So you're planning um, your self-care, you're planning things for your children and family, you're planning things, you're planning your cleaning and you're planning your meals and like cooking and like, what do you need to do in that realm? Because when I was thinking about this planner, I'm like, I feel like <laughs> I've I've been a planner all my life. And I feel like you either get the planner that is so simple to where it doesn't have hardly any structure. So it doesn't help to guide you as to what to think about. Mm-hmm. So you kind of stay stuck sometimes. Like, wait, what do I actually want to do? What do I actually need to do? Or you get the planner that's super intricate, that doesn't benefit you when you're in a really challenging season of life. That's like, I just need to keep the basics together. This is very too intricate for me. So it's kind of that middle of the road and it's helping you focus on the things that are consistently coming up in your day to day that you, when you focus on these four categories consistently, you are always feeding into yourself and nourishing yourself. You're always keeping up with things with your family, your children, you're keeping up with cleaning, which is so important. We all want clean homes and they don't have to be spotless, but we all want like a clutter-free home that's clean, that looks appealing and also cooking. That's always coming up on our day today. So these four categories are so important for us to think about. And I love that I just have more structure to my planning. So it's like, these are the things to focus on. This is what you're focusing on already. So why not plan for it? Why not stay focused on that? That sounds like an amazing tool for for fall and getting back into more structured time. That sounds amazing. Yes, yes. And it launches October 5th. Okay. I'm super excited. Yeah. Fantastic. What words would you have for a woman who, like you said, is feeling overwhelmed? You know, maybe they are like you felt when your daughter was young, overwhelmed, just kind of stuck. What words of encouragement would you have for that, that woman or that mama right now? I would say first, deep breath, deep breath. We have to breathe, like center, take some breaths, because the thing about it is you're doing the best you can. And there's always a way to move beyond where you are. Like you're not stuck. It may feel like that, but don't sit with that, right? Like don't sit with that thought that like, this is going to be like this always. It's not put one foot in front of the other. If you just think about what is the first thing that that I can do? Okay. Let me take a deep breath. What is the second thing that I can do? What am I grateful for? I'm telling you, when I was in that season of life, what really helped me a lot, because this was in my morning routine, I would wake up every morning. And when I opened my eyes, I would say three things I was grateful for. Because when we're in seasons of really hard challenge, we can only see the problem and we only feel the, the challenge. And sometimes it can blind us to what is actually good in any I don't care what season you're in. It's some type of good or some type of light. Find it because that can help you take that first you know, step to help you take that second step to get to where you're going. But don't try to, don't feel like it has to be a rush. Just feel like, let me put my, one foot in front of the other and stay in gratitude and I'm, you're going to make it. And sometimes even when we're in certain seasons, we want to control everything. That was my thing. I was very much a control freak. Like I needed to look this way. I needed to be this way. And God was like, no, it needs to be my way. Like, I know you're saying it needs to be. No, you need to, you know, we hear this word surrender, but I just say accept, accept where you are because many times where you are, God is trying to grow us in a certain way. If you're feeling really like it's a very much of a challenge, it's something in it for you. I always believe it's something in it for you. And it may, and any, and it's not always going to feel good just because, right. It's not going to always feel good. That's the thing that I didn't realize, but I'm like, 
from that challenge came this business, like, and this business helps so many women. So it's not going to always feel good going through the challenging times, but I'm telling you, it's something in it for you. And if you pay attention and if you really believe it, you'll see it. Yeah. Thank you. Those are good words. I would love to ask you a question I ask all my guests, and that is for your favorite five. What are five things that you are listening to or doing or wearing right now that are your absolute favorites? Oh my gosh. Okay. So one is I love dresses. I've been wanting to, I've been buying more dresses. I love to wear a dress. If I throw on a dress, it just is like, it's so easy. Love it. So dresses. I'm with you. Right. (laughs) Another thing that I've been loving is my um, ice vanilla lattes. I get it almost every day. Love them. The third thing would be I'm listening to um, the Dropping Gems podcast is by Debbie Brown. And I love that one. The third thing that I'm loving right now is my, I mean, fourth thing is my business. Oh my God, hands down. I'm loving my business right now. I love helping women. It is feeding my soul. And then the fifth thing that I'm loving is spending time with my family. Like, and I know that might be like, girl, you probably spend time with your family every day, but I am able to be present with my family in this season. And that has been feeling so good. So those are my, those are my top five. That is such a blessing. Yeah. Being present with your family. Thank you. I love those. Ashley, it has been so good talking with you. I love your whole story about how routine and things got started. I love hearing your encouragement for women and your practical advice for starting a routine, keeping it simple, putting, you know, one step together with another step together with another step to move yourself in the direction that you want to go. Exactly. Thank you for having me, Joanna. This has been such a beautiful conversation. I hope that so many people get out a lot out of it. so much for listening. Ashley truly is the routine queen. I hope she gave you lots of ideas and encouragement to add a healthy routine or two to this new season. And remember what she said, keep it simple. All the ways you can connect with Ashley, including links to the resources that we talked about are in the show notes. Later this month, I'll be giving away one of Ashley's planning pads to a GTL newsletter subscriber. The winner can choose between the done in a day pad the Own the Week pad, or the Nourish and Flourish meal planning pad. I'm so excited about all of these. If you get my newsletter already, you're entered to win. If not, sign up now so you have a chance at winning too. Being a subscriber, you'll also get all the details from the latest episode, plus free goodies, tips on friendship, community, or gathering your girls together. Friend, don't let the conversation stop when the show is over. Share your story and start your own conversations with the girls in your life. I'll see you back here in two weeks. Thanks for tuning in.